The groundskeeper for the Mount Gilead Church told me about another really cool place that I should check out. It's his home. He gave me very rough directions. I don't have any reception out here. I'm in the middle of who knows where in Tennessee. I'm following the Google map. So the actual, I, I can't look up anything, but the map itself, I can see where I am on the map. And I'm trying to follow these back roads best I can to get there. So let's go explore. I found it. Real deal. Sit down the road here. Wow. Well, this is Carlin. He was out taking care of the Mount Gilead Cemetery earlier and told me about some really cool stuff, including this. It'll amaze you what's in here. How old do you say this is? Over 100 year old, 1896. Wow. I got a bunch of stuff stored in here. Amazing. <laughs> this is really cool. The saw. They, 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 they is another room that goes down inside uh, I don't have my key it's just a woodworking shop down there I've got set up and you say this was your wife's great grandpa great grandpa she's fourth generation of it I mean this is a real blacksmith shop it with is. everything in it it is it was featured in Tennessee magazine 1955 she has a magazine inside somewhere there's another in the cabinet him sitting out here on, on this thing with this old handsaw vibes, sharpening a handsaw. Really? Sitting right out here in the front door. Wow. You know what that is? No. It's an old coal scuttle you sit behind a oh. wood stove. See that stove right back there? Yeah. You set that behind an old stove to put <laughs> your coal on. You know, This is amazing. A lot of history here. So you turn this thing right here to make the air come up through to make a fire burn. Wow. I haven't had it lit up in a couple of years. There's the anvil. The real deal tools. You know, it's really rare you get to see something like this the way it actually was. This is original. It's no creation. Yeah, not like a fair or something. Because you can see the wood, how it is, all black from the coal. Because all that I got covered up is coal out there. Don't even sit on it and pedal it to sharpen your tools with. <laughs> that was my wife's great grandmother's bed. Wow. There is an old sawmill right in behind it, runs off of steam. Been built in the area about this before this was built. Huh. All of them are dead. Uh, the building sold here a while back. Uh, the county owns the sawmill. It was donated to the county. I don't know if that blade come out of it. Oh, uh, long years ago. Jeez. What an amazing piece of history. What is it called? A swangle tree. Swangle tree. Yep, that hooks up in behind the horses to hook the chains and stuff up to. Huh. Hey, that's not an old tool. It is. Well, I bet it is, actually. 
Just a lever? Like a, what is that? It is to pull a wagon rim up on the wood when it's hot to stretch it to get it to go up on the wood. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that. I've seen that something like that before. Is it off of a, um, some kind of farming gear, I guess? Nope. Nope. See that dot? Yep. Start your dot right there. And you roll it. They, they had all this measured around it, so how many inches that they would roll it on steel that they had to cut out and make wagon rims. It rolled, they rolled it in. Wow. And it told them how many inches they had to have. Primitive. Yeah. And what are these things right here on the, hanging on the door? Those go in a wood stove in the pipe. Oh. It's a, called a damper. Yeah, okay. And when you turn it, it closes the far off so it don't burn so big and get so much air. Right on. Yeah, I've seen them now that I've... But that's what it is. See it hanging, I recognize that. Cool. That's what it is. What the wagon is... wheel hub. Wow. It was one that was probably brung here that uh, was damaged and he took it off and he built a new one to go on. Cross-cut saw. It's covered up. This is some of the era of this place. This is what they cut the grass in the field off around through here with. Here, let me get down. Oh, my God. The original gas powered lawnmower, I guess. Yes. <laughs> it's not got the rig from mother on it. It's a sickle mower. Sickle mower. Sickle mower. Never it pulls seen its own one. Self. You walk behind it. I never seen anything like it in my life. 1949, I think, is the date on it. It's not got the rig from mother. You know what that is? Little tiller? Nope. to lay off rows in your garden with to plant your stuff to push it along and cut your groove. <laughs> little garden. Little garden. Garden tool. plow. Little garden plow. Some other antiques in here too. Oh. Wow. Tell me what them are. Oh, that's post hole digger. I've had one of them, but I've never seen an adjustable one. The best post hole digger I ever used. Wow. This one. That's cool. <laughs> Glass to come out of an old church. No. Can't see through it. Yeah. Window panes. Window panes. The hand saw in. It's a seat. You sit on it back there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you put the hand saw in here, turn it bottom side upwards to file it, to sharpen it. It was featured in the magazine. He's sitting out here in the front with it. And he is buried out there at that Mount Pisgah Cemetery. Oh. The old outhouse. <laughs> it's got the seat and everything. He's about to tell me what they used to use for toilet paper. I've always been curious about this. You don't know? No. Corn cobs. Corn cobs? Corn cobs. There's some corn cobs in there. I didn't know that. Corn cobs. Wow. Makes I, your butt raw. I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> Carlin's just not a man of antiques. He also has some sweet fish. There's my truck. Nice ride. Been Very totally cool. redone. Carlin, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate right. it. <laughs>
Carlin just told me that used to be the old general store. Back in the early 1800s, 1900s. So long, Carlin. Thanks for joining me today, friends, on this very fun adventure exploring Central Tennessee. I love this. If you watched the last video about the tent graves of Tennessee, Carlin was the groundskeeper at the first cemetery. And he told me how to get to the second cemetery that I didn't know about. Then he invited me over to his home. I thought that was so cool of him to do, to invite me into his own space. He said he had not shown that blacksmith shop off to anyone for years. I feel very privileged. I stay in contact with Carlin and he's become a friend. Thanks again, Carlin, for showing us your place, and letting us enjoy this history. Friends, if you like what you're seeing, hit like, hit subscribe. Make sure to check out the next video where we'll explore some abandoned places in Central Tennessee. And I'll see you in that next video.